Now, let me talk again about the grand delusions of Labor's net zero obsession. We know this is impossible, net zero by 2050. We're told that by the International Energy Agency. We know they're spending billions trying to get there. And we know our electricity prices just keep going up. Well, we're warned to expect more blackouts going well, isn't it? What geniuses. We know about the snowy 2.0 mess, the outback solar farm failure, the defunct tidal generation machines and all the rest of these renewable experiments gone bad. But lately, the big push from blackout Bowen has been offshore wind generation. One of the key measures in getting Australia to 82% renewable energy by 2030, which is the Albanese government's plan, will be offshore wind. We're way behind the game, way behind the rest of the world in producing wind off our coastline. They love offshore wind because even though it's more expensive, it's sort of out of sight, out of mind, they hope. Sounds great. But how easy is it going to be to actually deliver? How expensive and how many communities actually will oppose offshore wind turbines? I predict big problems. And let me give you a bit of a personal insight into this one. Over the summer holidays, I was lucky enough to go out on Cousin Barry's cray fishing boat from Port Macdonald, right down the bottom of South Australia, near the Victorian border. Even though we didn't head too far out to sea, it was terrific. Just had a fantastic experience. It was our own little taste of deadliest catch, topped off, of course, to, at the end of the day by a taste of those magnificent crayfish, surely the best eating that's going around. But what many of the locals down there at Port Macdonald talked to me about was plans for a major offshore wind farm right in the middle of their fishing grounds. The Southern Winds Offshore Project plans to install 77 wind turbine, turbines in, in waters off South Australia and cable the electricity back into Victoria at Portland. Each of the turbines will be fixed to the ocean floor, connected by cables to two offshore substations and then cables, of course, to the coastline and the onshore substation. Unsurprisingly, this $5 billion project is already facing opposition from local cray fishermen. So I caught up with Port Mac Fishing Association President, Mark Carrison. Yeah, we weren't expecting that one, that's for sure. Um, and if it happens to go ahead, like obviously it's a long, long way away from actually happening, but yeah, it's a very, very big area and there's a lot of a lot of boats do fish here and that, and there's a lot of effort that goes into them areas. So, yeah, if we, if it does go ahead and there is exclusion zones around there, we're, yeah, it's going to be um, pretty hard, I suppose. Let's talk about the habitat first. You're talking about 77 wind turbines fixed onto the ocean floor, cables joining them, two substations also at sea. Again, cables taking electricity to the shore. How much do you think this will disturb the crayfish habitat and therefore your fishing possibilities? Oh, it'd be massive, yeah, that's for sure. Um, like, I, I personally have worked on wind farms that before and I know there's a lot of... Uh, a lot of digging and that that goes on to bury these cables and that's what they've said they're going to do they're going to bury them direct in the sand which a few of us are at the meeting and that with them sort of laughed at because um there's no sand out there like it's all rocky bottom it's all reefs like some spots you know there's reefs that are 20 30 40 meters high um so their other alternative is to i think mechanically protect uh, the cable as well which obviously it's going to disturb the bottom and that like there's going to be drilling and i suppose cutting cutting the bottom and that um which Obviously, if you're a crayfish and that, and all of a sudden you can hear a lot of cutting and banging and whatnot going on around you, you're going to going to be pretty scared and not not want to come out and crawl into the cray pots, I suppose. Now, what about the actual wind turbines, 77 of them over a big area? It's a fair way offshore. Perhaps they won't ruin the view for anybody, but um, what about fishing around them? Are they, is this in an area where you would normally fish and would it uh, is it likely you'll be excluded from those areas so you can't actually fish there? Oh, definitely, yeah. It's a, there's a lot of effort that goes into them areas where the where it's proposed that it's going to be situated. Um, and then there's a cable that runs all the way from the, I suppose, one of the substations back to connect into the grid, which, funnily enough, doesn't even come into South Australia. It goes into Victoria. But, um, yeah, like, I think it's proposed at the moment there's a 100-metre exclusion zone around each turbine. Um, and then they've told us that there's no exclusion zones around any of the cabling which I find that hard to believe because if they can't bury them and that, there's cables going to be just floating on the bottom. So if we happen to hook up to one of them with our pots and that, um, yeah, it's going to cause a bit of 
disturbance to their to their cabling, I suppose, their HV cabling. So, yeah, we're like it's like I've said, it's still a long way off um, actually going ahead. But yeah, there's, we're, we're very, very, very concerned about um, what's going to happen because yeah, I can't remember off the top of my head how, how big of an area actually there is. It's going to be spread out, but 77 turbines along the coast. Yeah, it's, it's a big area. Um, like, yeah, like you said, we're not going to probably be able to see them from the shore because um, I think the first one's about eight kilometres offshore and that. And funnily enough, it's in Commonwealth waters or federal waters. So the state government, I don't think, actually gives a say in whether or not it needs, you know, approval from the state government. It's just in Commonwealth waters. That's why they've gone out so far. It seems extraordinary. There is the risk of disturbing the crayfish habitat. As you're saying, an exclusion zone around each of the 77 wind turbines of 100 metres. But what about safety? Yep. If you are trying to fish in between those exclusion zones where the wind turbines are, are you worried that that could be dangerous for the fishing boats? Because it's not exactly the safest profession as it is. No, nah, that's for sure. Like, you have heard in the past and that of uh, the blades and that falling off and parts falling off the turbine. So... You know, if, if yeah, if it's only a hundred metre exclusion zone, if something comes flying off, because they they do a ridiculous speed, the the turbines and that, like 180 kilometres an hour at the end of the tips and that, if one of them happens to come flying off and yeah, lands on a on a boat or something, yeah, it's obviously going to be very bad. So. Bottom line, Mark, obviously you've worked in the uh, wind energy sector. Uh, you've got no problem with wind turbines, but you think this is just the, the wrong plan in the wrong place? Oh, for sure. It seems like they've just looked at a map of Australia and they've just gone, yep, we'll try that one because there's no other proposed wind farm there yet. So they, I don't even think they've done any surveying of the, you know, how strong the winds and that are and the bottom that they're going to be trying to bury their cables in and all that sort of stuff because it's just, it's, yeah, like it's it's really rough terrain, I suppose. Like we, probably two or three weeks ago, we had a seven, seven to eight metre sea here and there was that much carnage and that of all the fishing gear, like, just imagine if that had to happen when they have these turbines out there and two floating substations that have got a lot of oil in that in them. Like, who knows what would have happened, you know, even from an aquaculture point of view, I suppose, like the safety of the marine animals and all that sort of stuff. Yeah, Mark, thanks so much for joining us. No worries. Thanks for your time.